Okay, what's going on, guys? Grand Rising. Today is Monday, April the 8th, 2024. We also have the solar eclipse today. Um, it's really cool. We actually, here in Dallas, Texas, we're right in alignment with the totality uh, part of the eclipse. It's like the most, I guess that's like the most um, darkness that you're going to see <clears throat> in certain areas. And this happens to be uh, one of the areas. So that's going to be really cool. Uh, really quick here, looking at the markets this morning, when you look at the indices, we have kind of pushed um, sideways and consolidated overnight. And then just here around 7 a.m., we were able to find um, an extension up, pushing out of that range, showing signs of strength. Um, when it comes across the board, to, you know, uh, the NASDAQ, your ES and uh, Dow mini futures. So they're all kind of showing that bullish flag in the sense that, you know, maybe they want to like, um, build some of the imbalances to the downside, then rise, or maybe they're going to hold their structure throughout New York today and just continue to go up. And then really quickly, when it comes to dollar, um, dollar index, when you look at the four hour, you look at the, <clears throat> excuse me, the daily and the four hour, um, that four hour price action that shows the direction to me is really showing me that we bounced away, like, especially like last week away from that 105, uh, excuse me, 104.50. And now we're starting to make our way even down, even closer to, I would think, uh, possibly 104, right? So if that happens and you can see that bounce off of Euro USD from 1.8 back into the 1.850s and maybe up into the 1.09s. So what we're going to do is we're going to get ready. We're about two minutes out. Um, look at your trader's constitution. <clears throat> look at your confirmations. Look at your game plan and uh, trade accordingly. So with that being said, let's have a good day and let's see what we get. Now, remember this too, you know, we're on a hundred days of trading futures, CFDs, et cetera, but mainly futures, just making that transition. And our goal over the hundred days is to make sure that three days out of five with the setups that we have um, set up, that we win three days out of five a week, right? That should put us into profitability and that should also put us into um, a certain level of confidence and clarity, right? So <clears throat> let's see what we get. And uh, like I said, we'll see what happens on the other side. I will say this, the price does spike down re relatively quickly into the 18, uh, 220s and comes into this down candle up and takes out these um, overnight players. I would like to see maybe a reaccumulation off the 18200 level um, to, <clears throat> to then possibly go back higher and take out the previous day highs. Give me one second, guys. Wow, I just thought about that. So just logging in the trade of beta. Completely forgot on... Um, on uh trade view and just did it though. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now we have the futures account ready now. So we're gonna be watching this price that open did happen. So let's just kind of stay calm here. <clears throat>
So we do so far, you know, it's kind of hang hanging up there, which I don't like, but we do have the inefficiency fill at the 18 three, uh, three tens. So, um, you know, I do want to see how, you know, they do uh, play this area, but I would li like to see, you know, price come down um, into this candle here and play off the open and the 50% of the candle once it takes out the 18,250, uh, 242 traders, sorry. Let's see, we're good. Price is pushing down very quickly here. Uh, and you're looking at like a one hour, four hour. It looks really good. Like it's just playing into the 18300 level. So <clears throat> you could you could possibly see a bounce here. Uh, the low on this market is going to be 18242. So wouldn't want to see it unless there was like a legit signal. And then um, with dollar index coming out the gate, uh, it looks pretty bearish. I mean, that was a really, really big push. So um you know, I would anticipate maybe some upside here once we take some liquidity. <clears throat> Excuse me. But looking across the board, you know, you look at Dow's kind of holding that 39,300. And then you do see weakness somewhat on ES. And then you see the same similar price action here on NQ. So this first five minute close, we'll see if they hold that five minute area or do they just go ahead and extend down and give us a 220 entry? <clears throat> this is certain. See what that initial move was looking like. That initial move was down. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, <clears throat> so all I really care about is the next 38 seconds, how this first five minute closes. Uh, um, because if they can close above 18,300, that might be interesting, but I still like the 18,250s and below just because of how fast it's, it's pushing down. And now a lot of people can see it selling. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now they're selling, right? So as that volatility comes in, they keep trying to push it to the floor. I'd like to see it turn around once it takes that liquidity below 18,250. Very nice push. And then the other two are still holding their one hour structure at the same time of this happening. So <clears throat> we'll keep our eyes peeled here. But I'm really just got my eyes here on this four hour, one hour um, when it comes to uh, NQ here, because they're basically just pushing down people who've been playing overnight and ripping their stops. And then once they do that, people are going to give that order away. And that's where we want to look to potentially take an entry. So that first five minute close, no signs of strength, um, more signs to 18.2. He's taking some quick notes. Um, and that first five minute close is bearish. Bear close. Sign of weakness. Okay, so eight. So looking at it right now, you know, we'll see if they hold this area. The other two are holding their one-hour structure. You're seeing a pretty good rejection, though, at the same time on ES that you're seeing uh, on NQ. <clears throat> so, like I said, we're just, our goal is just to be patient here. Maybe they'll position something right here, right? This is that last down candle. Price has already made that new high. 
And, you know, if we see a transition on the five, maybe we can factor something in. But I, I just really think they're going to push it lower first. <clears throat> Okay, so I do like the reaction here off the uh, the five minute, but we got to get a little bit more, you know, a little bit more price action. When you're looking at the smaller, which I don't like to take my entries off the one unless it confirms higher high than at eighteen two ninety two. So like right now, I just need to <clears throat> be patient and see if that um, price action ever closes higher. And if it does, then essentially what I'm looking at is going to be um, this level here, like this to here. And then I'm drawing fibs up and understanding that this is my candle that I'm playing inside of as like a reference point. But if I never get, you know, price to do that, you know, that signal inside that area, then um, there's no trade. So we should be patient here. Now, looking at the other two, you have ES pushing very quickly, and that's something you want to take uh, a note of, is when they're pushing price to double bottoms like this fast. Um, we are coming into the last 15 minutes of the hour, so I do think that this is starting to shape up really nice already. Let me get ready across the board here. Okay. So it's pushing down pretty fast there. ES is still holding one hour structure while uh, NQ could be possibly breaking. So that's going to me to be the the, the leader. Um, you usually want to trade the lagger. I trade NQ just in general. So if I see that uh, position, you know, do a leader type position, then I'll take that position as well. But I think that those lows of the day are getting ready to get swiped. And then we're going to have <clears throat> a pretty good chance off this 18 to 20 level. I think. All right, so let's be patient here. Look how they're pushing here at 840. Now we want to, now that we're we're getting that, we do want, like I said, we want to keep our eyes on this 15 minute down candles open and it's 50%. Okay. So 18220 looks really good if we get the response that we want to see here at the right time. Because I think that, you know, when I like to buy when price is crashing, not when it's taken off. So observe the masses do the opposite. And right now, price is crashing right into my area. So it's going to be patient. So we did just take that liquidity right at 840 on the dot. So low swept. Anytime prices, um, liquidity is grabbed, that's when I kind of evaluate the smaller time frame just a tad. Um, bear closed. Okay, so we'll see where we're at closer to 845. Um, but right now, when you're looking at how to frame up this trade, once that liquidity is grabbed, you want to know where the open of this candle and the 50% is. Okay, so when you look at it, you know, we're getting that response. This is what you're looking for, right? This is what you're looking for on the small time frames is that type of response after a liquidity grab. So now what you'd want to see is the transition. Right, you got the lower low sweep. All right, so price did come lower. And so let's be patient here and see if we can get what we want to see here. And the other two are still holding their structures. So don't buy when it's taking off, right? Let price come back down, 
right? And get into the area that you want. So I already want to know the low that like the low that's been taken. I want to know that low. So that low is 18,237. Right. So if I come in and I plan to get in um 18,237. Make sure I know that stop loss again. 18,237.50. Two thirty, thirty. Then take profits are going to be um eighteen five hundreds, but you can always move it. Yeah, just kind of framing up this potential, right? Now this risk is a little high for me. I want it to be a 025 percent risk, but as it pushes down into this area more and more, that's that gets me more excited to take it. Okay. <clears throat> Now, because of where we're at on the swing of the trade, I'd rather add into the trades today. So um, the way we're seeing it now looks pretty good. Let me watch over here too. This is a different one I'm putting in. Put that risk there. So that's a different trade, but okay. <clears throat> oh, wow. So it kind of already bounced over here. So let's see if we can get price to come back. I was looking for it to hit this candle right here and play it and put my risk at the low, but as you can see, that's way too far now. But if they push back down into the area, it makes more sense to potentially get it. Okay. Because that five minute has already taken off after taking that low, right? So. We just want to make sure we have that eyeball there. Now, I did have a CFD position I was able to grab, um, but I'm watching this position still personally. And like I said, I think it's the fact that the price is just going to rally. So, like, I was wanting it in here on that futures to get the best snipes, maybe if we pull back, but I'm not going to chase it on here. I think I was kind of um, questionable about the risk or the volume that I wanted to use just because of the fact of where we were uh, on the chart. So I, should, I would think if I would have had one unit ready here on futures, I probably would have sniped right there. But let's be patient. It's not going to leave without us. Um, we're coming into the last five minutes of the hour. So now this one's, you know, this five minute candle has exploded and you are getting that change of character, break of structure areas. I would anticipate if you're really trying to get this only to play if it pulls back. That would be the only way at this point because it has taken off completely. Which, like I said, I did play that under the CFD low, so I'll kind of show what that looks like here. <laughs> so it literally came right under on the same the same way, 18.070s. I ended up getting 73 as it was coming back me right before it got back in the range. And then I had my stop loss right here at the low of this market, uh, 65. So I had about a 10, 12-point risk on the trade, goals to shave some of the... Um, uh, most of the profits off the 18200 and then um you know evaluate from there so back to our futures trade you know if we can get you know this to pull back down i will attempt this trade <clears throat> you know if they can pull back down even slightly um that would be nice but we reduce the risk on this okay that one's fine Now, looking at the other two, we are holding structure on ES, and we're definitely bullish on YM. So uh, it would be nice to see a slight pullback to get another entry, but, you know, it's still very early, and NQ could definitely still go down closer to 18 twos. Um, so we'll see. Mm-hmm. Just taking a look at dollar here really quick. When we get a chance, dollar's, you know, uh, completely bearish, right? Uh, fell off from the 104.50 levels. Um, and then Euro USD has pushed up to the 1.850. So I might take a smaller trade here with my risk. Uh, right here, I'm going to basically put it in here because I'm willing to, um, I'm willing to basically, if it comes back down, take my re-entry here. It's an, an add another contract. And if it does work out here, then great, right? To get to the highs. So I do want to actually enter one more contract right in this area if it was to come lower. And then if not, then that would be a scratch. 
but once price kind of confirmed here, um, I think this buy make it open, extend back up to New York open. And so then I'm able to, if it does go ahead and do that, I'll go ahead and condense the risk down since it's one contract. And then on the CFD trade, um, just really quick, I mean, that one's doing really well from the entry. The entry was so superb on that smaller time frame that most of the exit should come here at 18200 So let me do that really quick. The cool thing about CFD is we don't have to pull the trade, so that's really good. <clears throat> so I think we're going to get a nice trade here as well. We don't have very much risk on the trade, so if we can push above like we're doing right now um, from 18 to 87 up into uh, 367. So that'll probably be a good day for me here on futures. And, uh, you know, I'd probably just go ahead and pull most of my profits or trail my risk in this situation with one contract. Uh, goal is to get back to 18,400, which would be the previous day high and start making our way up to 18,450s. But we'll see how price plays out. Because we are pretty high on the structure. Okay. So a little aggressive today, you know. We'll we'll find out on the recording, but you know, I do like to see like this inefficiency maybe get filled here and then go, but I also want to see them just continue up and take these people out. <clears throat> really good trade so far we'll see if we can continue to go uh future is a little bit more risky like i said just because of the uh, hesitation right here at 18263 but i still think overall that the reaction that we got after taking that liquidity is pretty good Very nice. Okay. <clears throat> so looks like we're gonna we potentially could get a pretty good trade here. If we can just push on through family until we get through this 18 through 60s, 18 through 50s, uh, that would be great. If we can just push through the New York open, 18 through 30s, I think that we have a really good chance to push the market open players out. Um overall. And I don't like how much room there actually is in between here, but watching the five minute opens and closes, right? We have about 26 seconds before this one closes. And this is a bullish candle opened, closes bullish, right? And then goes and extends up past this wick would be great. Not the best location of all time, but overall idea is really what it's coming down to today. And then, like I said, my CFD position, um, just because there's no hesitation, I just want to kind of show that one. <clears throat> but that one was really good because I'm looking at this level here as it was pushing. And it was like, eight, it was basically 89s. I was like, oh, should I take it? Then I took it like 91s. So it gave me a little bit higher. Um, but that risk from here, let's just say, down is about 22 points. So that's kind of where my mind is on that. What time frame is this? Okay. And so now we're kind of pushing back into that area, right? So that could be, um, you know, we'll see how they play it out. But we are pretty high on the swing, so it might be a little bit lower pricing. And then looking at YM, you know, the all three, YM still showing a lot of bullish strength on the one hour. Uh, ES is holding at 50% at 52.51. And but still has the equal lows below 5240. 52, um, so we'll see how they play this here. Um, in this next few minutes. But we are pretty high on the swing, so they may actually come for this. We'll see. Mm-hmm. 
the inpatient. And so I am going to look at, I mean, I've already set the risk, so whatever happens can, is going to happen. So I'm going to look at 50 and 5 here. And so those don't look so great when you're looking across, but I think the it's like an absorption play on like the one hour. So it's either these absorb and go higher or, you know, like I said, they've taken that low, they've kind of cleaned out this area and then they'll push a little bit lower into the 18, 220s, 18, twos, or maybe even lower into the 18, 120s. Um, but I, my goal is just to take one to two trades per day, see if they make it, if they don't, and then, um, you know, move forward from there. <laughs> that CFD is looking really good off that 18100 bounce. So I think if we can just get in a very aggressive push up to the 18 twos, and that would be a really good trade over there. Um, and same thing here. So it's just trying to get out of this range of the 18380s and going up and blasting 18400 would be great. So just gonna sit back and just kind of watch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, surprise so looks really good there. If we can cross this high of 18,370 on futures, um, I'll trail my wrist to secure the bag for the day to get that green day. Um, when it comes to CFD, we are up. Ooh, let's see, that's pretty good. Um, we we're up quite a bit on CFD if you took that one pretty early. Um, so just got no hesitation on futures going forward, <laughs> but still good trade so far. Um, I'm gonna set an alert here for this 18. Uh, this 18,367 and a quarter or two quarters. And uh, if we can get there, you know, for this type of day, um, you know, going into the 100 days, I would I would be, you know, pretty good with getting to there. Um, I do see price on a higher time frame uh, holding the one hour structure here at 18,3 potentially. And then we could push up into the 18,450s, which would be really good too. So, but we got to get out of this area first. We're kind of just sitting, so. So really quick, just looking at all three again, you know, coming into the end of this hour, you know, 9 a.m., a lot of volatility likes to come in. Um, they all are holding that one hour structure. Right. The only one that slipped below and took liquidity was NAS, right, at the 18250 area. But you still have the equal lows at 5240, a little bit lower on ES. And you have bullish structure on YM. It looks like it could extend up to 39400. So. Let's just get this push to New York Open, family, and I think that we have a really good chance to be up at least 2x times our risk. Um, 
and I didn't I didn't present another opportunity to uh, position that area. So as we move for higher, I'll condense down that risk, right? So those lows at eighteen two seventy. If we're able to push up to market open, I'd probably trail my risk in the 18 to 70 area. I really don't want to trail my risk. I want to accept the risk until that structure breaks at um, the high of the market, 18,372, or is as close as it can be to breaking. But looking over here, like I said, you know, they look pretty good. I like how ES is playing that 5250 uh, one hour last down candle. So let's get this push. Come on. I really hope 9 a.m. volume comes in right after this. That would be great. Um, yeah, that'd be really great. Now, if price does fly in our favor and we do smack the 18.4 very quickly and we're able to trail risk and secure that bag, um, I wouldn't see why price couldn't go to 18.450 or 18.500. 18.503 is actually the monthly open for April. Um, so... You know, that's a very uh, reasonable area to see price return back to as the monthly opens. Okay, so we're just sitting here. Looks good here on CFD. We close above 18,300 here on the 15 and 5 in about one minute and 10 seconds. Uh, we're starting to, when you look at the swing of things, right, we have a low that's been set because the price actually went lower. And we have a, a high that has, you know, been set during this morning. So now when you look at Fibonacci retracements, right, if you um, are looking at it from this perspective, every time it closes above 18,300 and the 50% of the swing, to me, it's going to start attacking points of interest. So New York opens in alignment with the 71% retracement. Market open and the 50% last up candle are on alignment, right? So 18350s. So if it was the blast up there fairly quickly, maybe distribute a little bit here. I would think that this wick is a target and the, top, the high of today is a target. So that's the goal. Let's see if we can get there. If we do, I'll probably, like I said, on futures, I'll probably go ahead and pull it. Um, just depending because of how that previous day high looks. But if it can extend above, I'll start trailing for sure. And then with CFD, uh, just kind of give you guys an idea of where that price is at. It's very similar. It's playing off that, you know, five minute down candle after taking the lows. And so I'll I'll exit up, I'll partial some of this as well. Once it gets above the highs, if it can get above the highs, say right here, 18200s, and then go break even on the trade. And this will be a risk off free trade. But Let's see what we get. They're kind of rejecting the 18300 level here. And the other one hours look a little uh a little bearish. So let's see. Okay. Really big push of volume here coming in at nine off that 18300 level. So that's you know, that's what we like to see. Um And then same thing here when you're looking at CFD, it looks pretty good. So if we can get closures above 18.3 here on futures, that's going to be really good. So we're still struggling a little bit there at 
still kind of sitting there, like I said, at 18.3. So we just need to get these candle closures in the next 15 minutes to be in our favor. Um, otherwise, like I said, I don't know what they'll do. But that looks good right there. That looks good. So come on. Let's see if we can get first 15 minutes of the hour are the most crucial. So. A good price here. Um, like I said, not the best entry because I was looking at like five different things, but I really like the CFD price as well. It's flying up. So big 15 minute candle here. And uh just knowing where we're at in the range, I think that if we go back and take the New York traders out, that's gonna be a pretty good trade. I don't really like how the price is. Okay, let's see if we can get, like I said, we're still hovering at the same level uh, coming in on a, a five-minute close. Looking at ES on that one hour, it does look like a lower high was formed on that one hour above 52.60. So, you know, any movement lower here on NQ below 18.3 on futures, I would think that is not as great. And price is starting to fail a little bit, this 18300 level. So we shall see. There may be lower prices, but those one hours don't look so great. When I look across the board now, Dow, they're kind of starting to uh, form that lower high at 39300 as well. So they are starting to push um, against us a slight bit here. All right, price looks good here. Just being patient. I said another five minute close. That close was below the 18300 level, which isn't great. But if we can get a push uh, uh, from this point back above 18.3, that would be more signs of, you know, price going higher. So looking at the other two one hours here really quickly, YM is pretty aggressively bearish from 39,300. Anything above 5260 on the one hour on ES looks like a lower high. So hopefully this is just them trapping sellers to then blast them very quickly. 
That's what it's looking like here. Just managing the CFD position just a tad bit. The entry's a little bit better on that one. And then this, like I said, this is, uh, you know, it could go down to the 18220s first, which we see this happen all the time. So if it does happen that way, <clears throat> it just is what it is. But I do like this range to potentially hold. But looking at those one hours, I don't know. So. And then just based on where the entry is, this is going to be more difficult. So we'll see how this 15 minute closes for 915. Um, but if we're closing lower than this area here on, on a 15 or five, I would think that they're going to go ahead and uh, start making their way closer to that next whole level. So it's got to be patient. Price is still looking pretty good. It's just, it's making people form an opinion. That's all it is, guys. So just stay patient. Um, you know, reduce risk if you need to. I only have one contract on futures, so I'm managing the risk today. Now, if I had two contracts, I would be reducing risk and paying myself, right? So on CFD, I had pretty much a pretty, a pretty sizable order to where I decided to pay myself some and reduce that risk down and to see if we can continue up. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I will say this when you're getting, you know, a five minute close above this whole level at this time right now of the swing, then I would anticipate if we get a five minute close above 18.3, then that next 15 minute close here at 9.15, if it's pushing that New York open, then I think we rally. Big pump of volume, uh, looks like came into the market here on our favor. So let's see. I was looking over at CFD, it was a nice little pump, nice, good five minute close back above the 18300 levels. And then, if you take a look at um, all three at the same time, when you look at ES, it looks really good how it's playing that one hour 52, 53 and a quarter. So if it's just absorbing orders in there to push higher to the 5280s, 5300s, then uh. I think we'll be able to see that here fairly quickly uh, going into at least 10, uh, hopefully 10. Um, I don't want to wait till 11 today to see this, but price is still in our favor. Um, we're, we're pushing up. So let's just, like I said, keep staying patient. Let's see if we can get to that area here on futures. For me, like I said, I'm going to trail that risk as soon as we get there, if we get there.
DFD looks good. I just feel like we're going to reach that 18.2. Um, dollar index did start to uh, bounce off the 104.20 levels. We did kind of see that liquidity grab on EU at 1.850. And now price, after taking that liquidity, has rejected that 1.850 at the same time uh, dollar in the 20 levels. So, you know, you may, you know, this could be interesting to see how dollar you know, plays out today. Um, but we still are kind of having a little bit of trouble here. At eight, we're above eighteen three, so that's good. Um, but we don't want to fall like it's doing right here, back below eighteen three. Um, especially, I would say eighteen two seventies. Really, don't want to fall that low at this point. Um, because then I would think it would start attacking. But with you know, how many minutes left? Two minutes left of this fifteen minute candle. If this fifteen minute candle is above eighteen three, then I would anticipate that this wick and that this high of the day would be uh attacked. So that five minute isn't like going into 915 really isn't the best. Um, so let's see how this closes. And then looking at the other two on that one hour, just to get a gauge of the markets, we're still at that 5250 level on ES, playing that 50% of the one hour last down candle. Um, with the equal lows, they're still open to below 5240. So about one minute left until 915. Um, five minute prices opening and closing bullish in our favor. So I just would anticipate a big flush of volume to come in and push this up because we've shown no signs of weakness to go lower since we swept the low of the day. And um, it just wouldn't, to me, it's like, unless it goes up back above New York open or close to uh, market and then sells, then I would be like, you know, this price should go higher. About 10 seconds, that 15 is back above 18.3, looking really good. So, you know, between now and then 9.45, these candles close like this, then I'd look like they did. They closed nice. Um, if we can continue to get this uh, open higher, close higher situations on the 15 and 5, then that would be good. But now that we've closed higher on the 15 minute, right, like right here, we want to see 18.300 respected until it possibly goes back above New York and takes out the highs. One hour uh, looks pretty good on the ES and uh, Dow as well. I really like how ES had already popped out today and it's playing at 50%. So, and then today we swept lows on NQ. So we'll see. Ooh, good volume right there, pushing fast. Now, this is where I've learned as a trader from doing this a lot. And when I get that feeling in the bottom of my stomach of this excitement, that's when I transition that into just being calm, right? So I started feeling that as soon as I could see price rallying right there closer to New York Open. So what do I need to do? I need to focus on being patient and watching the open and closes of 15-minute candles. So we're not out of the woods yet. I like how the one hour looks on NQ here. Um, but any 15 or five minutes, like I said, going lower will mess that one hour up. So
let's go prices pushing volume so let's see what we get um like i said we'll look at around i like to look at like 9 30 um we do have our alert set so we're good be right back I don't like how that price looks now. I will say just really quick. With that one hour, it's going to come down to how we, you know, how we play this range here. And with us already making those lows, um, we could get lower pricing. So CFD positions, though, I did partial some just to secure, you know, some of the bag. And then uh, I have such a good entry on there that I had the risk only like 10 points. And then I've reduced it down to break even. So we'll see if this can continue. We did get that unfortunate um, engulfing candle, but it was above the 18300 level. So it still looks relatively bullish to me. But every if we can keep getting candles to close five minutes above 18.3, then I think we should have a pretty good chance not to move down to 18.220s. But that type of price <clears throat> price action right there, um, I would say when you have a swing high to swing low that's already been created because they did push lower today, we're failing the 50% of the swing in a sense. So any closures below that, and I wouldn't like this trade, every time it rejects and continues higher on the swing, um, that would show me more signs that we might have a chance to attack points of interest. But right now, uh, we're just in that equilibrium phase. It's kind of There's some more five-minute volume. So that looks good. That looks good. Let's be patient here. So the one thing I do like when I, you know, look at these two assets, I want to bring this back uh, over here really quick so you can kind of see is when you have all three of the assets lined up, we had that sweep lower low, right? We'd never had these equal lows grabbed on ES and you still have YM kind of just in that same down candle range. So what I'm basically anticipating is if ES can hold the last down candle after pushing higher today in this bullish flag and then extend up to 5280 level then I can anticipate that we swept liquidity here and we're going to hold our one hours here and extend up, right? So you really want to be watching all three to get an understanding of what's going on in the whole market. And then when you look at now the intraday price, we're looking really good. We're pushing back um, above 18.3 still. And then you just kind of want to know where sellers are going to come in based off Fibonacci, right? So sellers could come in more than likely above New York Open again, Right. But you just got to think the people who sold New York Open, where they put their stop loss today at the high of the day. So we're looking good. We're pushing. Oh, we're pushing fast. Remember, breathe, because there's something going on when you can see price pushing fast. So we're looking good.
I really like how the one hours look now. They looks like they manipulated people into selling what they could see. So between now, like I said, and you know, 9 45, 10, 15 AM, I would think that we can make our way out of this uh, area the way we're looking right now on price. Now we extend, like I said, to the top of this range, right? We start pushing 80% of this range. I'll secure this risk because of how this trade is. Five minute dump candle, price closed higher and let's say we played the five minute. Well, this would be a, a pretty crazy stop loss. But if price pushes up and attacks the 80%, then I'd move it down into here, this, uh, the 270s, which would reduce that down to about a 17 point risk, 20 point risk, which fits our game. And then if price was to break higher, I have the opportunity to either take the full trade or trail my risk to secure more of the bag. So trade management was so far, right? Because we're still early in the day. It's pretty good. Um, and then, like I said, I'm playing it across the board on a couple of different things. So I really like how ES looks. I just want to show that here really quick on the 15, right? In one hour, is it starting to accumulate and, and push higher out of that area? So looks really good. Now, the one thing I will say that I am kind of focused on and want to see what's going to happen is when they push into this last up candle and they get above the point of interest, are they going to have the juice to push out the high of the day and the previous day high? Or are they going to distribute here, continue lower, and then find that area later this week? All right. So as we push higher on this Fibonacci retracement, the, the likelihood of price selling off could happen, right? But what I also focus on is on a 15 minute time frame, as then this is the end of the day, as 15 minute candles open and close bullish, right? I identify those areas, right? So I keep my mind saying, oh, we're pushing really fast. We're gonna say we're gonna go straight to TP. So guys, mindset, right? We're pushing above the New York open fairly quickly. So like I said, if we can close a five minute candle above there, I would love to condense this risk down. Um, I could I could even do it now, but like I said, I'm I'm still up from last week, so I'm basically playing with a little bit of house money from last week that funds into this trade. Now CFD, uh, let me take a look over there. Okay, yeah, we're good over there too. So I like how the one hours are starting to form with the high of the day is still you know sitting just sitting right there open. But like I told you guys, as we push fast into New York open, there also could be an opportunity for them to manipulate. So. What time is it? 26. So where's the clock? The clock's right here. Three minutes left in the 15 minute candle. If we get that open and a, a higher close bullish, then we're fine. And the next candle opens and starts attacking the last part, uh, the last part of the swing. And I do like the CFD price as well. And then looking at dollar, you know, we're, it looks still, to me, it looks bear, pretty bearish and that EU is going to continue higher. But we'll see. <clears throat> Really nice price here. We're pushing really nice. Like I said, if we can just get this alert to go off, I will say this most likely on my futures trade, just because I'm trying to hit certain goals per day. Um, you know, I'll probably be out of there with a twelve hundred dollar win today. But let's see, floating like eight hundred right now. So it's just you know they're playing that game. I'm watching those five minute candles open and close just as well as I'm watching those fifteens. And so same situation here is you want to have your mind you know, pretty much set on this last five minute candle. If it goes lower than that, it can go bearish. So what we're anticipating is with, with this candle closure here is that more volume keeps coming in to take out that high of the day. So it's looking really good. CFD positions fire. Um, we're closing in. We're above the half level 18150s there. So it's just now it's all about this push. Uh, you know, going above New York open here in the next minute and 47 seconds. One more, you know, five minute candle open and close bullish. And I think that there's this, there's a really good chance we take the high of the day. I know I've said it probably like 50 times, but just reaffirming the, uh, 
the bias in the area here as we continue to print different price action. Now, this is another thing I wanted to bring up is that we keep talking about a lot in the chat is um, higher time frame, all three, right? One hour looks amazing. We got the bounce off the 5250 level, and now you have that middle 50% of YM being touched, and now price is starting to rally, right? So they've, they've probably trapped a lot of people in shorts based off what they can see, and now we're taking their orders, which that's that's what I love to do. Prices above New York Open, we're floating about a 1000 in profit if you're on e-mini contracts. So, uh, like I told you, if it goes up higher than that and I can hit that goal of the day, um, where that alert is at 18.367, um, price could go higher, 18.4, 18.450s on futures. Um, but I'll manage my trade on CFD because, like I said, when you have a goal and you have 100 days of those goals, just shoot for your goal. Hundred plus points in that CFD position. So that's pushing really fast. That looks really good. All three are looking really good. And then with the uh, confluence of dollars starting to fail from the one hundred uh, four fifty level, um, I think we might get this pop. You know. Um, but let's see here. We are above New York open. Another five minute candle open and close bullish, right? You guys see that, how that works. So now we're pushing even more. We're floating about 1200 profit. We're going to hit the TP. All right, it's pushing guys. It's pushing fast. It's pushing fast. I think it's going to take the high of the days. People can't cover their positions fast enough. We're waiting for that alert to go off. We want to hear that alert sound today. And like I said, I will trail this risk up probably to here, or I'll go ahead and I'm going to secure it here on this one if we can push above. Now, like I said, I really want to see this five-minute push right here right now. With 14 minutes left, right, four minutes left on this five-minute candle, I can go ahead and do this here because we are above New York open price. All right, so if anything was to break down here at this part of the swing, it would be a wrap. But as soon as we exit this area, right, external liquidity, and we, we take these areas and push into this last up candle, I would be exiting, right? That's what you. Need, that's what I would be doing, especially if I have two contracts on. Today, I'm having to manage this one. So CFD pr price is going crazy. Let's go. So I want to bring this over really quick. If you guys can kind of see what I'm looking at on my middle screen, we got that sweep below the, the lows. Um, and then price, you know, was in our favor. We're trying to play up into like monthly open areas. So this is a good day for into the futures um, so far. Now, how price plays right here in this next three minutes, I don't want to see price go back below this five minute candle and manipulate at market open. Right. You can say that three times. Manipulate at market open. Right. A lot of the most manipulation on NAS 100 happens at the market open. Okay. So once we get this TP on futures, that'll be the end of the stream for into the futures for today. And then um, we'll manage. I'll kind of give you an idea about how I'm going to manage my CFD trade. Um, but we are closing in on that price level right now. 18,367. Just waiting for that alert to go off. Just waiting for that alert to go off, family. Let's go. Solar eclipse day. So that's pretty cool to get a win on the solar eclipse day. And this is my top step account. So this this is not, you know, this is actually my top step account. You guys can see right here. I don't want to pull up my actual like sonnet thing, but <laughs> So that 80%, you see how we're in that last up candle, we want to see in the next two minutes, just go ahead and push out the high of the day, right? This is the high of the day, 18,367. Um, but if we don't get that, family, um, I'm not going to settle for anything less than really 18,340s at this point. Because if it pulls back today, um, I don't want to be uh, waiting on that. So we're just getting closer. Remember I told you the 88% of the trade, we can just get that push on through. 
If you can notice something here as well, there's that push. As we're right at that 50 level. There it is. That's exactly what we want to hear. Okay, so let me go ahead and manage this trade correctly. That's the CFD position hitting two. So 352s, AP. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and close that out for futures today. Uh, maybe we get better. Uh, maybe we go higher, but that's a great day. So thank you guys for watching Into the Futures. This is going to be it for my trade today. Have a good rest of your day. Talk to you guys later. Have a good one.